Hey YouTube, how's it going? This is your boy Michael from Colossal Boxing Talk, and today I want to discuss the the events from last night. <clears throat> okay, first you had Peter Quillen versus um Koneski, and in the fight with Koneski, he um Peter Quillen was basically um he was the more dominant guy. He he he, he dictated the pace, but for some reason he didn't start throwing the straight right to later on in the fight which, in my opinion, was kind of a mistake on his part because I believe if he would have threw it early and often that he could have possibly got Konecki out of there or however you say his name. But what I did see is Konecki was touching Peter Quillen a whole lot. And honestly, Quillen is a – Quillen, he's a, he's a solid fighter overall, but I honestly believe that Quillen, he, he'll be in a lot of trouble when he starts facing – the upper echelon guys with power who can who can actually hurt him because I, I've noticed Golden Boy Promotions, a.k.a. Al Heyman, he's been matching Quillen up with a lot of soft punchers, and Quillen is taking advantage of that. And he goes in, seems like he has a hard chin. The only relative uh, hard punch I've seen Quillen face of recent is Rosado, and Rosado had him hurt multiple times in their fight. But Overall, I give Quillen a B plus. I believe he should have got the stoppage in that one. I know uh, Konecki, uh, I, b I believe they say he hadn't been stopped or something of that sort. But I believe, I mean, w when you're at when you're at the level that Quillen is claiming he's at, <clears throat> you should stop a guy like Konecki. That's just my honest opinion. But I'll, overall, I'll give him a B plus. Okay, now Sean Porter versus Paulie Malignaggi. I have to admit, I, I was I was dead wrong about that fight. I, I knew Porter was the harder puncher, but I, I didn't expect him to uh, to beat the to to beat Paulie like that. He honestly he 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 basically basically like sealed Paulie's career up almost, and somewhat in my opinion, because I mean, like I say, Paulie's still a solid fighter. He still can beat a lot of top notch guys, but. But that fight there shows you that Sean Porter is for real. And Sean Porter is a threat to any any and everybody in the World Tory division, in my honest thoughts. But honestly, uh <clears throat> Porter, he, he he looked very impressive last night. He came out with his jab and then in the second round he caught Paulie with a left hook. And when he hit Paulie, I, I honestly Hey, I, I, I mean, man, I don't know how Paulie took that one, but Paulie, Paulie has a solid chin, but, but, but Porter power, his power is real, It's very real, and he, he looked great out there. He just he cut the ring up on Paulie very well, and then he was uh just land, landing nice authoritative shots on Paulie, and you know Paulie was fighting back as usual, but I mean Paulie, Paulie doesn't have any power, so. Sean Porter was able to eat the eat the shots he was throwing and just keep coming for all night long, but he didn't attack Paulie with reckless abandonment. But now when they got in the clinches, he was hitting any and everything he could hit. He, uh, I seen him hit Paulie a couple times behind his head, but I mean, like I mean, it, it, it's part it's part of the fight game. It, uh, so I'm not calling Porter dirty. What I'm saying is Porter Porter roughhouse Paulie. He he got in there. He got very physical with Paulie, and Paulie didn't look ready for it to me. And also, um, <clears throat> I want to say if that's Paulie Swan song. Hey, Paulie, I, I, I appreciate everything you did for boxing. You've been one hell of a fighter for all these years. You were always um, one of the major underdogs and things of that sort. So if that's your last fight. Salutes. God bless you, man. Um, you got a good job announcing. So, I mean, just, ah, oh, man, that's, that's kind of crazy. Probably one of my favorites, though. But it is what it is. Shout out to uh, Sean Porter and Team Porter for, um, for doing what they had to do and stopping Pauly. Also, now, another thing with Porter is I kind of now, uh, now since Sean Porter, he's got his first title defense. I, I know he has to fight Kell Brook. I believe by um, July 19th or something of that sort. So hopefully they can get that fight on and up on the way. 
and hopefully by later on this year we can see Sean Porter versus Keith Thurman, the fight a lot of people are clamoring about. And <clears throat> honestly, uh, that's like I said on another video, when I heard Kenny Porter mention the money isn't right to fight Porter, I, I, I thought that was a bullshit excuse. And I honestly still do think it's a bullshit excuse. Because like you say, don't get me wrong, now Porter made more money fighting Paulie than he would Thurman, but I mean, Porter's not like, he's not like, like some type of cash cow. He, he's a nice, solid young fighter with a, with a hell of a, with a hell of a lot of potential. But he, he's still, he's not a cash cow. So for him to use money, that, that's, that sounds more like, like a duck move to me. And like I say, I, I respect the man for his skills and his talents. But for some reason, I, I see his fans, they, they have more, they seem to have a little more confidence in him than, than than his team does as of right now in regards to fighting Keith Thurman, because like a, from what I see, they, they seem a little, I won't say scared. I said they they seem a little cautious about fighting Thurman anytime soon. Okay, now let's go into the um, <clears throat> the Bernard Hopkins versus Shumanov fight. Man, I don't. You know what, Bernard Hopkins is, he's inspiration because to be a 50 year old man, where is he 50? He's either 50 or 49, but I'm going I'm to go with 50. I, th I think he's 50. But, anyways, to be a 50 year old man and, and doing the things that Bernard Hopkins is doing is unheard of. Bernard Hopkins went in the ring with Sh Schumann Babinoff, and he, Schumannoff, I mean, excuse me. And, and he he literally he outboxed him, outslugged him, and I mean Bernard Hopkins got hit with a few shots, but Bernard Hopkins was just, just dominant. And then in the eleventh round, he set he set that right hand up perfect, that straight right hand down the pipe. And when he hit Schumann off, and I I just knew he wasn't going to get up. And when he got up, he sh he showed me a lot. But it, I mean, it was on. It was honestly nice to see B Hop try to go for the knockout because he's trying to end his his uh, knockout streak. He hasn't had a knockout in ten years. Last KO was the body shot against De La Hoya. So, like I say, a it, it was nice to see B Hop out there very aggressive and going for it. But uh, only thing I can say, B Hop shows all boxes. If you take care of yourself, take care of your body, don't eat junk foods and things of that sort. Don't drink, smoke, get in the gym, work out, do what you got to do. Hey, he's a prime example. Anything is possible. No, Nobody in their right mind would have ever thought a 50-year-old man would be a unified champion at a division uh, as su such as light heavyweight or, or any division in boxing. But, but honestly, um, after the fight, B-Hop kind of, B-Hop lets you know his intentions. B-Hop wants Adonis Stevenson next. And if Adonis Stevenson beats uh, Funfara, and more than likely, I, I believe Adonis Stevenson, Stevenson is going to beat uh, Funfara. And after that, <clears throat> then we can get the uh, this mega class going to, to so, so one of these guys can be, Basically, almost the undisputed champion at light heavyweight. The only the only other guy who will have a stake to that claim after uh, Bernard Hopkins and Stevenson fights will be Sergey Kovalev. And the way B Hop sounds, see Bernard Hopkins, he he he's old school. He's an old school fighter. He's kind of like he 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 literally has that mentality like I'll fight anybody and everybody. That that's his mentality. So. So more than likely, uh, so, I'm willing to bet somewhere down the line we're going to see Sergey Kovalev versus uh, the Bernard Hopkins or Adonis Stevenson winner somewhere down the line. I'm, I'm doing a little foreshadowing going going kind of ahead, but that's just my honest belief. And, I, and also, I want to uh, <clears throat> also send a shout out to my boy Otis Griffin on this fight last night. He lost. He lost to uh, to the young upcoming prospect Marcus Brown, but Otis Griffin as always. He goes out there, he fights his heart out, and and I can't do nothing but tip my hat to him. 
So, hey, good fight, OG. Sorry about the outcome. Hey, I know you're a strong warrior, and you'll continue doing things the way you're always doing, with class and respect. Take it easy, bro. All right, y'all. Uh, now, this is going to be the end of the video, everybody. And, and I would like for you guys to like, comment, and subscribe. Leave your comments in the comment section. I, I'm here. I'll respond to you. And you can also uh, um, like us on Facebook at Colossal Boxing Talk. Hit us up on Twitter at Colossal CBT. And yet again, this is Mike, and I'm out. Peace.